Hey up, we're here with Ginger and the Lizard Creations. I have a vague love affair with the Northern Lights. Now, uh, sometimes I think I would like to see them and then I live through another year of a Utah winter and I think, screw that, they keep them where it's cold. So, um, I can make a lovely picture of it. Let's go play! All right. I am going to do another Northern Lights pour, just like way up north, only I am going to make it a landscape this time instead of the uh, portrait. And I am also going to make the colors a little bit less busy because I think I selected too many last time. I have selected Montmartre Titanium White, Deco Art Pewter, Deco Art Deep Sapphire, and Amsterdam Titanium White to do the swiped mountain range in here at the bottom. For the top, we have Ultramarine Blue Montmartre and Arteza Payne's Gray, which are going to be kind of dappled along as the background color. And our lights themselves are going to be a teeny tiny bit of Deco Art Sterling Silver, Arteza Pearl Lime Green, and Arteza Pearl Strawberry Red. Because if you look at videos of the real Northern Lights, they are largely green, a little bit red. What I also want to take an opportunity to do this time, I, of course, am going to make the Northern Lights all swirly-whirly using the uh, catheter-tipped injector. I do love what that does. But I am also going to see if I can do it on a smaller scale instead of with this big old 60 milliliter, if I can do the same thing with a 10 milliliter in smaller spaces because I want to see if I can use it to make a smaller project that I'm working on that is going to be like a sunrise sunset kind of thing. And it's a smaller canvas so I don't need huge 60 milliliters. Love how that uh, that Mimax wood conditioner makes that react just right away. Get cells just by having two colors. So I've already sucked up some ultramarine and some Payne's gray into this. Now I'm gonna take up a nice dollop of that strawberry color. I'm gonna go out along the outer edge here. have a stripiness to it. A little bit of promising. Let's try it again. Over on the other edge. This one is ultramarine paint and uh, the lime green and then the paint's gray. And a little bit of the mixing. A little bit, a little bit. Got that at the edges so I can see that. And we will just kind of go merrily into the big one. If you get the proportions right, do small layers. The catheter tip syringe allows for so much more mixing than the than the 10 millimeter syringe does. It's more the effect that I'm looking for. So I am going to tip
Get some of that wispy going. Kind of encourage it in all directions. So I'm going to push it upward, back, back, up, 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 <laughs> which is going to push off some of that. That is really, really interesting looking, but it's not, not really what I wanted it to do. And this big old blob of green is just a bit too present for my liking. sit and have a think about what we're doing here. So there's kind of just this block of blue, which I'm not crazy about. This has the nice wispiness that I'm looking for. I kind of just push this way. Pull back the other way now. Ooh, lump in the paint, lump in the paint, lump alert, lump alert. Where's my tweezers? No one likes lumpy paint. So let's see if there's a lump of something here too. Yep, there it goes. Okay. The paint is really thin up here in this corner, and I've got to do something about that. There's not a lot of paint even left on the canvas. It is moving ever so slowly. Big ol' ridge of paint just refuses to go over there. Cause a little bit of mixing, but then maybe I'll be able to push it off a little better. Now what we want to do is add in the mountain range. Mountain range in deep sapphire and pewter.
Now, since Montmartre and Amsterdam Titanium White react differently from each other, I am going to have the Montmartre be one side of the hill and the Amsterdam be the other, and hopefully the differences in how they react will add texture. We shall see. Little silicone swipe tool. Starting at the edge. Pull down. Like that. Will develop more the longer it sits as you're seeing it's happening here because if I'm going there to there that's all opened up and done stuff and here we come with our Amsterdam going the other way Obliterating some of the other stuff.
Okay, I think I like the composi composition better with that because we've got the the low lying and the peaks kind of bring you this. This brings you in this direction. The peaks kind of start bringing you up into here, and everything sort of points you towards this little red sort of. So there's kind of stuff stuff to see. So we're gonna have to see how it dries. I like the stripies going on in the mountains. Come down and have a look. Guess what I almost forgot? Oh, do not forget, do not forget. I am putting in stars. I love glitter. And I love using it in spacey ones. I want to have a lot of stars. Silvery looking ones. Tiny touch of the white with the blue. I'm gonna come right across with a little, little dusting of the, the very bit of ones. Hopefully I didn't get any stars in my mountains. <laughs> we will see when it's dry. Now let's look at it. Here we go. Got a little sparkle sparkle now from the glitter that will dry in there and look like little starry stars all over this northern lights sky. It'll break up that block of blue a bit, quite a bit if you can see because there's several of them in there. It's going to be nice and shiny. Take that all in. That. Don't know what to call that. But we will come back. There we go. Largely without glare. <laughs> we'll come back and see it when it is dry. Testing out how I feel about filming outros in my little alcove here. I kind of discovered that these white painted shiny doors when they're all closed up and you bounce light off of them, they act like a really nice soft light box. And I kind of like that. And I think I get a little bit less echo in here than I do in the front bedroom. So yeah. But let's take a close look at this thing. This is now known as the Edge of Night. I so love how the darks of the ultramarine and the Payne's Gray got together and made these little lines up in the, the, I don't even know what to call them, the Northern Lights plasma cloud things. And the mountains turned out very, very striking. I think they looked a little better when they were wet. But they will look amazing again once they are varnished. Let's get close up on this, shall we? It can be argued that I went a little crazy with the uh, glitter. But, you know, if we didn't have so much light pollution around, we would see a ton more stars in the sky than we do. Which is a sad truth. So, I'm okay with my generous use of glitter. Check out that cloud of light. It's awesome. I love the iciness and even the sharpness of those mountains. They came out really, really well. And just the the interest and the, I don't know, whimsicalness of of the the colors and the, the way it all sweeps and the way it all came together. The Edge of Night is just damn beautiful. Yes, it is. So, thanks for watching and comment, like, and subscribe, and we'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.